Tubers. Warzone 2 Season 4 is here along with the new map, Vondel. Of course, I had to bring you guys the best settings video. Graphics, audio, controller, anything, everything, the best FPS on the new map in the new season. I got it here for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, like the video. Gonna give a quick shout out to the Noti Gang, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, guys, jumping right into it. A lot of you guys are always asking, Rado, what are your controller settings? What's your sense? What's your uh, FOV? Etc. 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 Let's jump right in on board with our controller settings for the new season and for the new map Vondel. So, of course, we're playing on controller. We are playing on the tactical button layout. What does that mean? That means I crouch with my right stick and I melee with circle. Uh, starting, you know, talking about controller settings and tactical button layout. I do play with paddles on the back. My bottom left is X for jump. My bottom right is circle for melee. And my top right is triangle for played up and switch weapons. So I do play tactical button layout. I crouch with my right stick. I melee with my circle button. That helps me snake and drop shot without having to you know, drop shot with circle or be on an Xbox controller. I do not play on uh, flip uh, triggers. I do not play on a, a custom button layout. You guys can play on that. If you don't have a custom controller, I would advise you guys to go through here and do a custom button layout. For our controller, we don't play with bumper ping on. Our stick layout is on default. We play with the controller vibration off. Why do you play with the controller vibration off? It makes aiming easier and it would just it would just mess up your overall controller gameplay you guys need to turn it off if you haven't got used to it get used to it it is way better and quote unquote meta for our controller sensitivity jumping aboard we do play 1313 with a 0.75 ads sense multiplier i think 1313 is a good sense for how fast you do die in this game we did get a plus 50 hp health buff so you are going to die a little bit slower but i think you know this high of a sensitivity is crucial for being able to turn around turn on people you know 180 360 the whole nine yards i think it's very crucial this is where i'm most comfortable at for our sense multiplier we play on one across the board for third person ground vehicles air vehicles and tablet sensitivity for vertical aim access this is all on standard i don't change any of this aim down sight hold change zoom is sprint tactical sprint focus auto sprint is off equipment behavior is hold Whenever you pull the heartbeat sensor, we just hold our left bumper. We don't have to click it on and then click it off, toggle it. Weapon amount activation, ADS melee, prioritize, interact. This is a big one. So whenever you, some of you guys say, Ryder, how do you pick things up so fast? Whenever you do land, this is the setting you want to utilize for that. Prioritize, interact. What does that mean? Tap to reload and interact, but it's going to be tap to interact but hold to reload when they're available simultaneously. So if you need to reload your SMG, but there is a, a plate on the ground to pick up, you're gonna tap to pick up the plate and hold your square button to reload your SMG. Hopefully that makes sense. This is a big one. It needs to be on power, doesn't interact. Armor plate behavior, apply all. Whenever you do hit the triangle button, the Y button, the plate button, it puts on all plates, not just one plate. So you hit it one time, puts on all plates. You don't have to keep spam hitting it. Jumping aboard with our advanced controller settings. We do play with aim assist on. If this is off, you guys are, I don't know what to tell you. It's the most broken mechanic in the game. It needs to be on. Aim assist type, we play on default. Some people play on black ops. They're both very good. To my knowledge, default is better at long range. Black Ops is better at close range. If I were you, I'd stick to default. I'd stick to what I got in this video. ADS aim assist on third person ADS correction is assist. Aim response curve, dynamic. This is the aim assist type I'm basically playing on. Dynamic with a reverse S curve mapping for fine aim rate control. It is sticky and it's pretty wild. You guys need to be using default aim assist, dynamic aim response curve. Trust me when I say this, it's the best setting for aim assist in the game. ADS sense multiplier, again, 0.75 when you are ADS. We talked about that earlier. ADS sensitivity transition, instant. Custom sense per zoom, 0.75, just reiterating what we have up here. Input dead zone, this is strictly controller based for your left and your right stick minimums. My left is on 0.03, my right is on 0.05. For the triggers, the on everyone's controller, your controller, my controller, this should be zero for everyone in the game. As soon as you touch the trigger, it's gonna activate. Gyro aiming, I don't mess with any of this, I turn it all off. Movement behaviors, toggle sprint, auto move forward is off. Tactical sprint is double tap. Grounded mantle on, automatic airborne mantle partial. Automatic ground mantle off. Invert slide and dive. This is a big setting. This needs to be changed to inverted. A lot of you guys say, Rada, how do you dive jump so well? What does that mean? How do you dive into a parachute pool to get that boost when you jump off a building? The way I do that is I tap my right stick or I tap my circle button to dive instead of holding it. So if you're on standard, you hold to dive. If you're on invert, you tap to dive. So I tap my right stick to dive off the building and then I pull my parachute. This needs to be on inverted to do this more smoothly and make it more efficient. So inverted for invert slide and dive and behavior. Plunging underwater is gonna be movement based. Parachute auto deploy off. Sprinting door bash on ledge hang mantle, mantle only. ADS stick swap off. Backpack alternate control off. Weapon mount movement exit on. Weapon mount exit delay medium. Depleted ammo's weapon switch on. 
This is another big one that needs to be on. If you run out of ammo in your AR, it's automatically going to switch it to the SMG, so you don't sit there with no ammo and, and, and have to switch manually. It's automatically going to be switching for you, if that makes sense. Quick C4 detonation on. Vehicle camera recenter default. Camera initial position. Free look. Scoreboard map behavior. Toggle. Ping wheel. Moderate. Double tap. Danger ping. Moderate. And wheel menu behavior. Hold. Jumping aboard with our graphic settings to continue out through the video. We do play on full screen exclusive with a 4090 GPU with a, a 240 hertz 2K 1440p monitor on 240 hertz refresh rate. Again, I do play on 2K 2560 1440. Those of you guys that do play 1080p on PC, I would consider upgrading to 1440p. My console users as well, it's a big difference to go from 1080 to 1440. And it's an even bigger difference to go from 60 hertz to 144 or 240. Guys, definitely need to get on that if you do have the money or funds to upgrade. Dynamic resolution off, aspect ratio automatic, V-Sync off, and gameplay and menus, custom frame rate limit unlimited. Quick tip here for those of you guys that feel like your GPU is running like hot. As you can see in the top left corner, my GPU is running at 43 degrees. If your guys' GPU in game is running hot over 80 degrees, in my opinion, you should limit your frames because that's causing your GPU to be under load for no reason. Again, my GPU is sitting in the menu at 43 degrees. This is perfectly fine, so I have mine on unlimited. Again, those of you guys that do have high temps, you should limit these to like 300, 120, and 30. So your GPU is not sitting there working while you're not doing anything in the main menu. You don't need high frames in the main menu. Display gamma, 2.2. Brightness, we're on 55. High dynamic range, off. Moving on to the quality tab, 100. Render resolution, 100%, full 1440p. Fidelity, FX, CAS, 51. If you guys are dev a lot, I heard the higher you have this turned up, the likelier chances you are to dev -airing. So I leave mine at 51. I don't mess with it because I don't dev -air. anti aliasing Filmic SMAAT2X. Normal. Video memory scale, 90. Texture resolutions, low. This has a very high effect on your memory. I would definitely keep this at low. Texture filter, anisotropic, low. This has a pretty good effect on your GPU, so I do think this should be low. I want to go ahead and say something right now. My settings are a mixture of good quality and great performance. I want high frames. I play at a competitive level, but I won't, don't want my game to look like Play-Doh, look like crap. So this is why I do run these certain settings. Nearby level of detail, I had this on low. Distant level of detail, I had this on high. For some reason, I feel like this needs to be on high to be able to see things at farther distance, like enemies behind cover or something like that. So I'll leave that at high. Clutter draw distance, long. Particle quality, I have this on low. This does tax your GPU a little bit, so I would definitely keep this on the low side. Particle quality level, very low. Bullet impacts off. You guys can turn these on if you want. It's just going to hurt your frames just a little bit persistent damage layers on this definitely taxes your gpu performance but it definitely needs to be on in my opinion for shader quality we have this on low this will tax your gpu tessellation we have this off altogether there's no reason to have it on and it will put a hindrance on your performance in the memory side and the gpu side on demand texture streaming off streaming quality low volumetric quality low this is definitely another big one that will tax your gpu deferred physics quality off Water quality, we have this on wave wetness. This does hurt your GPU performance a little bit, but it kind of makes it a little bit easier to see through the water. Definitely, we'll maybe come back to this one day and see if we can have a better situation there to get more frames in the water, but for now, that's what we got. A shadow map resolution, low, screen space, off. Bot shadow quality, high. This is gonna affect your GPU, but in my opinion, I feel like this affects the level of detail in shadows. And sometimes people are hiding in shadows, hiding in dark corners, and you just can't see them. So I have it on high. Spot cache, low. This definitely needs to be on low. It's going to affect your memory very, 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 very much. And this is what's going to hurt your FPS overall. Keep this on low. Particle lighting, low. Ambient occlusion, keep this off. Green space reflections, off. Static reflection quality, low. Weather grid volumes, low. Post processing effects, NVIDIA reflex, low latency. On plus boost, off, 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 zero. Film grain is zero. This is going to make your game look really grainy and sharp. I, I, I don't want that. I'll leave that all off. Jumping aboard with our field category for the graphics. I do play on 119 FOV. People ask me why. I heard and I've always, you know, thought of this. It could be a placebo effect. I really don't know. It could be a myth. I heard on 120, you lose aim assist more. I'm comfortable on 119. I play on affected FOV. Those of you guys that do struggle with recoil control, you absolutely need to have this on affected. Independent just looks absolutely so uncomfortable. Affected is meta. Trust me when I say that. Put on affected and hear me out when I say this. Put on affected. Put your weapon field of view on wide and change this setting right here. We're going to get into it. 119 FOV, affected FOV, weapon field of view on wide to make the weapon look smaller so you can see more on your screen. Third person field of view, 90. Vehicle field of view, wide. It makes the vehicle farther out on your screen. First person camera movement. When I talked about, you know, recoil control, affected FOV, wide weapon field of view, first person camera movement, least 50%. What this does is it 
gets rid of 50% of the weapon movement. So your gun's shaking. And it, this, this is a setting that can alleviate motion sickness for those of you guys that have too much going on. But in reality, this is adjusting the intensity of the camera shake, which when you know when your gun's moving around and shaking, makes it harder to control recoil, make it 50% less, easier to control recoil. Third person camera movement, 50. Third person ADS transition, third person ADS. And a default spectator camera's uh, game perspective, totally up to you. You know, that's personal preference. Jumping up on board with the juicy one, audio. The game has horrendous audio. We all know this. Us PC players, unfortunately, have a little bit better off than you guys on console do. We can tweak your audio a little bit with EQ settings and different programs. So I have a sound EQ for my headset, but most importantly, we'll go through the most important part. Most important part is I play on PC audio mix with 80% master or 80% master volume. On my old videos, I used to be on 100, but I had changed that to 80 to prevent clipping. What is clipping? It clips out certain sounds. Leave it on 80. Gameplay, I leave on zero. Dialogue on 40. Effects, 100 to get all the sound effects in my ears. Voice chat on 90. This is personal preference. And cinematic music volume on zero because I don't care to hear about the you know the cinematics. Um, I have my game coming out on a certain channel on my Go Explorer, so I can turn it up and down on the fly. Voice chat on game voice channel, all lobby. If you're on Steam or you're a Steam user, I heard if you change this setting from all lobby to friends only, you gain 20 more frames. How true is that? I don't know, but... I heard on Steam it does work. Last words, voice chat on, prox chat on, default system device. I do play on push to talk. I do have a few subtitles on. One of the big ones, reduce tonight of sound. This needs to be on. Mono audio, this needs to be off so you can have directional audio. When this is on, your left and right audio channels are merged into the same sound sent to the left and right so you can't tell directional where they are. Make sure this is off, make sure this is on. Juggernaut music on, hit marker sound effects. I have these on Modern Warfare and mute game will minimize off. So I said the audio setting you need to pay attention to, PC audio mix, and then we're gonna go to our desktop here. We're gonna go to the bottom right-hand corner to our sound, this little system sound icon. We're gonna right-click on that. We're gonna go to sounds. We're gonna go to the playback section, which is how you're hearing things. You're not recording with your mic. You're gonna go down to where your game is playing audio. Mine is on my game slider on my GoXLR, which is right here. Yours could be on your Astros, it could be on your your real tech audio, it could be on your Razer headset. So whichever, whichever one of these options right here is where your game is playing through. If you play through speakers, you're gonna click on it. Well, so again, mine is game. You're gonna click on it, you're gonna go to properties. This is very important. You're gonna go to enhancement, loudness equalization needs to be turned on. You need to click on it. You need to go to settings. This has gotten got quote unquote nerf. It's not now. And you're going to go over and you're going to put your release time on short. A lot of you guys are going to say, right, this makes my game incredibly loud. I know it does. It, it makes your game incredibly loud. That's the price you pay to have good audio. Turn your release time on short. Okay. And then you're going to turn the loudest equalization on. Apply. Okay. What else is going to happen is your chest are going to be very loud. It does it suck to get used to. It does. But it's absolutely worth it whenever you do hear the footsteps. Thank me later in the comments. Okay. We're going to jump on board here with our interface. Menu text size default. Text chat size default. Text chat opacity. You know, this crap doesn't matter. Getting on board with the color customization, how to have a really good, vibrant, good-looking Vondel map or Warzone, you know, season four, Almazra map or Ashika map or whatever it is to have very vibrant colors to make your game look more appealing and be able to see people. This, these are some of the things I change. So color filter, I play on color filter two. As you can see here, it changes the color of certain things, your pings, you, yada, yada, yada. For color filter target, this needs to be on both. So you have it on your, in your interface and you have it on the world, so the game. Color, world color intensity and interface intensity, I have these maxed out on 100. For my colors, I have these on custom. My ping is white. My neutral pinks are pink. I made these pinks so I could see them better in game. Again, this needs to be on filter two, both 100, 100. And then the other little tidbit of this for my PC players, on console, this is all you're gonna have. For my PC players, we're gonna go to our desktop one more time. We're gonna right click. We're gonna go NVIDIA control panel. While we're at the NVIDIA control panel, we're gonna go to a adjust desktop color settings. While we're here on the bottom, you're gonna get a little setting called digital vibrance. This comes set to 50%, which is default, which is probably how your game looks. I max, you know, you, you could test this out to whatever you want. This changes no performance values. This doesn't tax your FPS, hurt your FPS. All it does is changes the colors to what you see on your monitor and what your stream sees if you do stream. It starts off default at 50. A lot of people, I tell them just to bump it up to about 75. And as you can see, look at the difference. It Look at the difference, it, the vibrance on my desktop here. Bump it up to 75 to start. Me personally, I go straight to 100. So I play on this. You guys play on this. See the difference? That's why my game color this 
mixed in with that filter make my game look so much better than anyone else you ever watch or your game that you play at home. That's that for color customization. We'll jump down on board here with our HUD. Vertical heads up display, 100. Horizontal heads up display, 100. All that's doing is how far that takes the mini map and it moves it from the center of your screen to the outer uh, outskirts of your screen. Those of you guys that play on a big screen, a 70 inch TV or, you know, a bigger TV, you should consider lowering these down so you don't have to turn your head as far to see the mini map or the top right corner or the bottom left hand corner, et cetera, et cetera. Mini map shape, square, this is a big one. This needs to be on square, over, round, you get to see 30% more of your map, makes you more aware of, as, as a player. This is one of the biggest issues with, with, with casual players or quote unquote bots. They don't have this setting turned on and they, they're like, how did you know that guy was there? Well, look right here in the top right corner. If there's a guy rotating up here through this alleyway, you have no clue on a round mini map that he's coming. On a square minimap, you already see them coming. You see what I'm saying? Mini rotation on horizontal compass, on crosshairs, on hit marker visuals, on damage based hit markers, on player names, full name, in game text chat, on center dot, on this should be on, in my opinion. This um, helps you focus on the center of your screen where your reticle is, and you want to keep that reticle head high at all times so you have good centering. Center dot scale, I had this on default. You can make it the size you want. In my opinion, I think default's the best. Telemetry, I have my set on custom. What is it doing? It's this top left corner up here, what I have. So this is my game volume muted. This is my FPS at the time. My ping, my pack of loss, and my GPU temps. You guys can, you know, customize this to your liking. I think these are the big ones. Clock's not a bad one to have on there if you want. But these are the big ones in my opinion. And I think you should have these on. If not, some of you guys on console, I think, have this now. If you're on PC, these absolutely should be on. If not, because it's too cluttered for you, you should at least have on your FPS and, in my opinion, your service latency and your GPU temperature. If you're, if you're not worried about your GPU temperature, turn it off and at least have on your FPS and your latency so you can tell if you're lagging or not. Finally, jumping on board down here with the advanced interface, gameplay tips on. Uh, these automatically get turned on because I play custom games. You don't need to have them on, but it is what it is. Tool tips off, skip introduction off. Um, In-game alert icons. So if you know if you're lagging, if there's if there's packet bursts, if there's latent, latency variation, uh, if there's high latency, you get these symbols in the left corner of your screen. You could you need to have these on to know if you are lagging, in my opinion. Hardware in-game alert. If your GPU temperature is, is hot, it'll give you an alert. If your shaders are still compiling, this can cause you to drop FPS. There'll be an alert for it. Inverted flash, I have this off. When you get flashed, your screen, if you have this on, your screen will go black instead of going white. I used to have it on, but it's a little weird, so I turned it back off. And then use system mouse cursor off. And then system key behavior, we have set we had that set to operating system. Now, some of these are personal preference, totally up to you guys, but that is what I'm rocking. With that being said, those are the best settings for Warzone 2 season four and for the new Matt Vondell. Hope you guys do enjoy the video. If you guys do enjoy the video, do not forget to smash the like button on it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Got a super bad bitch, feel like Jonah Hill. Look at how she walk, and you know.